Good morning. And today is Wednesday the 2nd. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. Christ is the way. To come unto the Father, we must follow Christ and walk in his paths. Follow thou me, he commands. He is the truth. He is, his word is truth. He knows all truth. He has truth. He has all truth and is all truth. His truth sets us free. I am the spirit of truth, he instructs. He is the life. He is our redeemer who saves us from spiritual and temporal death. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. We can find a perfect example in the life of Jesus, said President David O. McKay. Whatsoever our noble desires, our lofty aspirations, our ideals in any phase of life, we can look to Christ and find perfection. <sighs> okay. So today is Acts chapter 24. And this is an interesting chapter. It is the trial of Paul, so to speak. He is before Felix. Yep. And um, the Jews, Paul's accusers, come down. Um, the chief captain of Jerusalem sent him to Felix, the governor, because he found no reason that Paul should be in prison. I'm going to sneeze, sorry. And... And... Um, Anyways, his accusers come down, and they have their side, and then Paul has his side, and then Felix has his side. So, to begin, um, Ananias and the high priest, uh, they called forth Tertullus, Tertullus, um, He's going to he's gonna be the mouthpiece for these people. He starts off by just gushing over the governor, saying, oh, how wonderful is our peace because of you. Oh, you're just so wonderful. You are so wise and all-knowing. And, oh, you just, you've done so much for us. You're so fantastic. We love you so much. You're the greatest. And then they say that Paul has caused a disruption. He He's citing, um, what does he say? Uh, he, uh, what's the word? The word is sedition. That's the word. Um, he's causing an uproar. He's He wants to change the government. He wants to get you out. He's just being so silver tongued, you know, and, and then he says, by great violence, did the chief captain take him out of our hands? It's like, no, nah, it was in the middle of the night. That's not great violence. Okay. Calm down. Take a freaking chill pill, bro. And so then Paul gets to speak and he says, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that you've been a judge for a while. Cause then I can speak freely in front of you. I can feel comfortable that you know the law and what you're doing. Um, and so he's like, I've done nothing wrong. I was in the temple. I was purified. I was worshiping. I'd only been there 12 days. And I said nothing. I have no disputation against the law. I believe what is written. And they know it. They know the law. Um, and he says also, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. And that's the one I chose for my personal statement. 
I will always strive to have a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, and then he goes on to say, Excuse me. So he basically says, the only reason I'm standing before you is because I talked about the resurrection. Then Felix heard these things. Having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the utmost of the matter. So he's waiting. He's like, okay, I've heard both sides. And my, uh, my verdict is... I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the chief captain to come here so that we can talk. And then it says, uh, and as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judging and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I shall call for thee. He hoped also that money should be, should have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him. Wherefore, he sent him the oftener and communed with him. But after two years, uh, Por Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. So from this, I can infer or assume that Paul was left in prison for two years. What? I need a tissue. Sorry. Two years? Two years in prison? For talking about the resurrection? First off, he goes before the chief captain, and the chief captain goes, you know what, I don't see anything wrong with this guy, but I'm scared, so I'm going to send him to the governor. Then he goes to the governor, and the governor is like, okay, it doesn't seem that big a deal, but let's just keep you in prison for two years. But it does seem like he talks with him during those two years, like they have a communion, they, I don't know, it's. just do what's right do it like it's the law he's done nothing wrong let him go no let's keep him in prison for two years holy cow all right let's see what our verse by verse has to say honestly what okay we've only got a full uh four little things here Verses 1 through 9, an eloquent orator is brought in to accuse Paul of being a mover of sedition among the Jews throughout the world, a ringleader of the sect of the Nazareans, and one who goes about profaning the temple. In verses 10 through 21, Paul energetically defends himself. The accusations, he argues, were without foundation, and these Jews know it. Verses 22 through 26, Felix realizes that these are indeed matters of Jewish law and defers judgment on Paul. The apostle remained under house arrest in Caesarea for two years. Felix, meanwhile, hoped to induce a bribe from Paul. And then in verse 40, uh, 27, Porcius Festus, the new procurator of Judea, arrives and we'll soon hear the case of Paul. <sighs> uh, for reals? For... <sighs> no, mo no wonder he wrote so many letters during that time. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm not sick. It just sounds like I'm sick. I need water. And to blow my nose. I already blew it twice this morning. I don't... I'm not sick. All right. What the heck? What a frustrating chapter. I can only imagine what it's like for Paul himself. He obviously is like 
I'm here for a reason. You know, God is working through me. He's beside me. He said so himself. Be of good cheer. How frustrating. How absolutely frustrating. There's a law to help serve and protect the citizens. And the law is being ignored. You're... Two years is not a, a, a speedy trial. Okay? Oh, gosh. How frustrating. Okay. That's all my thoughts for today. Um, I'll leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. Um, any of you who are new here, um, who don't know what this is all about, there's a, there is a description in the box below talking about the New Testament mini challenge. If you want to participate, there's information down there as well. Um, yeah. Okay. August 2nd. Okay. This one is Proverbs by King Alfred. Who is King Alfred? I don't know. <sighs> O Lord, o Lord God Almighty, I charge thee of thy great mercy, and by thy token of thy holy rood, rod, R-O-O-D, rood, that thou guide me to thy will, and to my soul's need better than I can myself, that above all things I may inwardly love thee with a clear mind and clean body, for thou art my maker, my help, and my hope. If thou hast a woe, tell it not to the weakling. Tell it to thy saddle bow and ride singing forth. Tell it to thy saddle bow and ride singing forth. I don't understand that. I'm trying to grasp the concept of what he's trying to say. Because it sounds like it might be a beautiful thing. If thou hast a woe, tell it not to the weakling. Or maybe it's not a beautiful thing. If you have a problem with me, don't tell it to me. I'm too weak. Tell it to thy saddle bow. And ride singing forth. If any of you know what that means, please comment below. Let me know. I'd be interested. All right. That was Acts chapter 24, and tomorrow we do chapter 25. We will see you then. Bye.